becoming more popular, but are they healthy or just a new hype? We know athletes use the cold blasting practice to relieve muscle soreness. But what do they do for your body if you're not in training? Ice baths do slow the blood flow in your vessels. Less blood flow means less inflammation. According to WebMD, hydrotherapies like ice baths can also reduce your cholesterol, boost immune systems, and ease pain from certain injuries. I talked with Dr. Peyton Fennell from Novon Health about other benefits of ice baths. Here's what he had to say. You can lose weight. Um, the way that that happens is, is through ice baths, um, you will increase your metabolic rate as you begin to warm yourself up once you have been submerged into the ice bath itself. So that's number one. Number two is mental resilience, uh, the ability to kind of not necessarily dictate your behavior based upon the way your body feels, but that you mentally are clear and conscious and the ability to withstand certain stressors that you might have throughout the course of the day. Third is the actual increase of dopamine that's produced in the brain, which gives you that mental clarity as well as that overall just feel good feeling throughout the course of the day. In fact, lowering your body temperature may also be the key to living longer. According to a study from the University of Cologne, cold temperatures activate a cellular cleansing mechanism that helps prevent proteins from clumping together. Protein aggregation can advance aging, but there are some risks associated with this. The unsafe factor, if you get into temperature that is you know, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and you have a pre-existing heart condition and you're not used to that and you decide that you're going to submerge yourself for 11 minutes, that is, not a, that is not what I consider a safe option. And so when you start looking at this, you, you work yourself into it. So mm -hmm. maybe an ice bath in the beginning might not be something you tolerate, but more of a colder water, maybe not quite at that level that you would see with the ice. And then you work yourself um, as you become more um, adapted to that, that you, what you're doing, that's when you can get colder and colder. Despite the risks, the ice bath trend is becoming more popular, and it is tonight's cover story. It's 8 in the morning. The pool is 58 degrees. Oh, baby. Cold is all the craze. Celebrities and influencers are plunging into icy waters all over social media. I can't feel my feet or my hands. It's not that new a phenomenon. It's just the thing that's new about it is how many people are now doing it. That's Professor Mike Tipton from the Extreme Environments Lab at the University of Portsmouth in England. He has studied the impacts and the risks of severe heat and cold on the human body. Humans are a tropical animal. We want to be where we evolved, which is sort of East, South, East um, Africa. Now that means that stepping into cold water is, is pretty stressful. The science around the benefits of plunging is murky. We do have some hypotheses as to how cold could work. But until the properly controlled studies are done, we can't be sure. But Tipton says overcoming the challenge of cold water immersion may contribute to you some have benefits. Mental resilience at your fingertips. You have productivity, you have focus, you have um, just like this euphoric sensation. You get a bunch of energy. I definitely get this rush of like adrenaline and yeah. serotonin and dopamine. Cold water immersion evokes a fight or flight response and part of that response is to release the stress hormones. So absolutely going into cold water is going to wake you up. On the flip side, there's a whole host of potentially hazardous responses that are associated with doing that. According to Tipton, in the first 30 seconds, a cascade of reactions occurs. Cold water sucks heat away five times faster than cold air. Skin temperature falls rapidly, causing an uncontrollable gasp. Hyperventilation stops blood flowing to the skin and increases blood pressure. This is known as the cold shock response. That cold shock response accounts for about 60% of people who die in um, going into cold water. And that's particularly hazardous if you're hypertensive, if you've got an aneurysm, cardiovascular disease. And historically, we used to think that the most dangerous response to immersion in cold water was hypothermia. What's much more likely by going into cold water repeatedly or for long periods is you would get what we call non-freezing cold injury. And this is a damage to the small 
nerve fibers and blood vessels and can result in lifelong disability. For those who want to try it, Tipton advises making sure a doctor clears you of heart risks and never taking a plunge alone. He also suggests on, avoiding water colder than 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius and limiting plunges to five to 10 minutes max. You've got what you need in the first couple of minutes of immersion. There's no need to stay in longer. And remember, there are safer, proven ways to get some of the benefits. Well, we know for a fact that exercise provides a lot of these beneficial changes in mental and physical health. Think more like your beloved TV athletes on the field and less like them on ice. Somebody order a Roy on the rocks? A good Ted Lasso line always helps. Of course, this is important. If you're thinking about trying out ice baths, you should talk to your doctor about any pre-existing conditions and if it is safe for your body.